Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. The metronome is one of those indispensable tools for any musician because its audible clicks are giving you a time reference to keep on time and on beat as you're recording in your arrangement. So it's hardly a surprise that Studio One is also featuring a metronome, but there's a couple of settings that are quite powerful and surprising about it, so I want to introduce you to all the intricacies of the metronome today. Let's take a look. We can activate or deactivate the metronome on a global basis by clicking on this icon here inside of the transport bar. Now when I hit play, we're still not hearing any audible click and that is because when we look in the mixer console, we also have a metronome toggle here on our main output. We actually have a metronome toggle for each output separate in Studio One. So you could send, for example, a click track to a musician who's wearing headphones and recording in your studio while you're not hearing the actual click on the main out. So this can be toggled right here. And as I expand the outputs tab here in the mixer console, I could also turn the metronome on and off for each of the individual channels. Then next to the metronome on off button for every output, we also see this fader icon here and that allows us to adjust the volume of the click for every output separately. So this should cover the basic settings of the metronome that most of you are probably familiar with already, but there's a couple more sophisticated settings as well that allow you, for instance, to load your own metronome sounds or to render a click track for the entirety of your song, which can be very useful, for example, in a live setup. You can open up the metronome settings by clicking on this wrench icon next to the global metronome on off button that you find in the transport bar. And here we have a couple of different controls. First of all, we can adjust the volume of accent, beat and also offbeat on a separate basis. So accent being the downbeat that you're hearing on the first beat every time. Beat being all the other ones. And we can also, as I mentioned, turn up the offbeat value. Can be very useful when you're working with slower song tempi, for instance. Then we also have the option to have a separate metronome sound for each of the individual elements of the click. In case you always thought that the metronome needs more cowbell. And you can also store and load your own presets with your own sound configurations. What's really cool is that you can also load your own samples inside of the metronome. I've done that right here. And uh, yeah can be a nice change of the classic metronome every once in a while. Click, clock, 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 click, clock, clock, clock. Moving on, you can also specify whether you want a pre-count or pre-roll here in the metronome settings. Pre-count means that the metronome will click for the duration of set bars here before your recording starts. So let's say I'm entering two bars here. I'm currently in 4-4. Four, four. Two bars of 4-4 four, four would be eight beats. And if I have pre-count enabled, I just go to bar three here and hit record. Then I'm gonna hear eight clicks of the metronome before the recording starts. Click, clock, 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 click, clock, 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 click, clock, clock, And now clock. I'm ready to record. Also, I really need to change that sound back to the original. <laughs> When pre-roll is active, on the other hand, then the entire playhead cursor jumps back by the amount of bars set. So this is not really a metronome-specific setting in that sense, but can also be set in the metronome setup. You can also specify here with click in pre-count only that you're just hearing the click on pre-count, not during actual normal playback. Right? Now the click just stops as soon as the recording starts and you really just get this kind of count in. Can also be handy in certain situations. If you never want to hear a click during playback, you can toggle that on and off with the checkbox down here. Now repeat accent is something that's not useful when you're working in 4.4, but if you're recording music in other time signatures, then this can be an incredibly useful setting. For example, let's set our time base to 12.8 here and 12.8 has multiple accents per bar, but if repeat accent is off, you're really just hearing the first one and then it takes a long time until you hear the next one. Right? So that's where repeat accent comes in really handy because it just, yeah, reflects that time signature much better and will be much more useful to a musician who's recording in that situation. 
So that covers pretty much all of the metronome settings available in Studio One. But there's one more thing that I want to point out here, and that is the render button. Super, super useful, especially when you're working with show page, for instance. And to work with this nicely, all you need to do is to click here on the track list up here where you also find the other global tracks. Um, if you don't see this drop down menu here, then probably the width of your track list is expanded enough to show all of these icons next to each other. And in that case, it would be this one here. And then all you need to do is just put that end marker to wherever your song is ending and then hit the render button here in the metronome setup. And when you do that, you can specify that you want timeline start to song. And you can also render the loop range, but I prefer doing it with the start song and end markers. Hit OK. And just like that, you get a perfect click track rendered out with the sound that you used and everything just to your liking. So as you can see, the Studio One metronome settings are perhaps a bit more powerful than you thought. And hopefully there was some new information for you in this video. Thank you for watching.